Welcome! In today's video we are going to talk about spray painting guitars with a spray can. I'll make other videos about other kinds of finishes you can put on your guitar down the line, but in this video we're only talking about spray cans. I'll eventually even do videos about spray guns. But I feel that spray cans is a perfect way to start, so Let's start there. I'm going to talk a little bit here about how I used to paint with spray cans when I started out and how I do it now and how it's changed and why I think you should just skip how I started and go directly to how I do it now. If you look at some of my first videos, you'll most likely see that I spray painted in a way that I don't do any longer. And it all comes down to this thing that I have right here that you're going to get close-ups on in a second. And this is what I use now. And it is one of those things that I showed you in one of my Guitar Builders Life Hacks a long time ago now. But if you haven't watched all of those videos, you really should because there's a lot of good information for guitar builders there. Things that have really helped me out. So go and check those videos out. There is a playlist on my channel that you can just watch. This is my guitar body holder. I drill this into the cavity of the neck and that lets me hold the body in place. And it's super simple to make. It's basically made out of two pieces. This is just a rod of wood with a piece of wood with three screws in it. I attach this part to the body and then I have a handle that I can hold on to. The other part is this. It's just a plank with two pieces with a hole in them, screwed down to it and pipe. And this fits in there. And I'm going to show you now how this works. Here I have a scrap body that we're going to use as a test for this video. And all I do is I line this up into the cavity. I screw this in to it. Like so. Now this allows me to move the body around. And if you look at my early videos, I would hang the body from the ceiling like this. And I would move the can from one side like this. And then I'd flip it around and spray it again like so. And I don't do that any longer. Now I do this. I hold the body like this and I can hold it upside down like this and I can move in with the spray can around these areas and I can move it up and down like this and I can flip the body around like so and super easily move across the sides and then I can angle the body like so so that the light hits into the body at an angle so I can see any reflections and I move the can like so and that lets me put the paint down in a more convenient way and it also helps a lot with the clear coat because when you're clear coating with a spray can you'll see the reflections of light and it will look almost like you're putting down water it will look like a wet surface is applied because it's obviously wet and that lets you see where the clear coat is and it just makes everything a lot easier and it makes everything go faster and it also prevents runs because you can move the body so if you accidentally put down a little bit too much and you're afraid that it might start running you can super quickly level the body out and move it and make sure that the paint doesn't go anywhere because if it's just hanging like this and you put down a little bit too much it will immediately start running and it will be too late to fix and you'll have to sand back the finish once it's dried and you'll have to wait for something like a week before you can do that so it will save you a lot of time. This is a thing that I've shown you in one of my life hacks, as I've already said, and it only takes you half an hour to build, maybe 15 minutes. It's a super easy thing to make. Now, what I use this for is I can actually clamp this down to the table or to a saw horse if I'm doing outside. And that will allow me to hold the body. So I can just press this in here. And that will allow me to hold the body leveled, as you can see right here. And so I can paint on it and I can actually put on a lot thicker coats of paint and lacquer when the body is flat like this, because I don't have to be afraid of it running anywhere because it will be leveled. And I can also super easily flip it around and do the same thing to the back. And that means if you can put on thicker coats, you'll get less orange peel because it will level itself out. If you can put on thicker coats, you don't have to put on as many layers when you have a thicker coat. There are a couple of things you want to think about when you put on your lacquer or paint and it doesn't all have to do with orange peel. Orange peel is basically the paint drying 
while it's being sprayed out. So if you think of the paint moving through the air onto the surface, it actually has the time to dry a little bit and the wetter you can put it on the better but you can also trap air in it so you have to be careful so that you don't put on too much that's why holding it into the light and seeing the lines of wetness appear will help you a lot and also let you know i suggest you do a punch of test pieces because this is one of those things that you have to do a couple of times before you get the hang of it it's better that you have a couple of pieces of wood that you're doing this to than that you're ruining your guitar and have to send it back and redo it. So just have a couple of test pieces of wood and do this ten times and then do a guitar and it will turn out great for you. Here is a picture of a can and as you can see the paint will move out in what looks sort of like a cone. It means that it spreads out and you can actually visually see this when you're spraying but it obviously doesn't look like this picture this is an illustration to help you understand try to paint in how the fade looks so you get the darker color in the middle and it turns purple to the side it's supposed to be the fade of the paint so when you're moving the can across the body that you think about the fade as a cone and so you start painting on the outside of the body and you're moving across the body and then you're moving back and you're continuing continuing moving across the body and then you're using the fade of the spray as an overlap to make sure you get an even spray across the body. And by doing it that way, you'll end up with a nice even finish. Another thing that is very important to remember is the drying time. You should read on the cans what kind of time you need to put into it. For example, in this base, after sanding and sealing the wood, I painted the guitar with the color twice and I had 20 minutes break in between those two layers. Then after 20 more minutes I started clear coating it and I clear coated it six times six layers and I waited 20 minutes in between. But that was because that was the acquirements on the cans. Different cans will tell you different things and different kinds of lacquers will tell you different things. Sometimes you'll just use aerosol cans that have a poly based lacquer in them and sometimes you'll have something a little bit more fancy like a nitri finish and you need to read the instructions on the can because they tell you how they're supposed to be used. You can also find extra information about the cans online on the company's website. They usually give you information on how to get a good finish with their product. So make sure that you actually look at the cans you use. Most of the times the brand and the kind of lacquer that they are providing will be a little bit different and so you need to actually read what it says on the can to get the best finish out of it. It's more important, I would say, that you read the instructions for your cans than the quality of the actual cans. Because if you're not following the instructions and using a product the way it's intended to be used, you're not going to get correct results. Anyway, I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments below if it did. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, I would appreciate if you did. You don't have to if you don't want to. But again, I would appreciate if you did. I'm trying to make the channel bigger and I'm trying to teach you a bunch of fun things. And hopefully you enjoy the content that I'm trying to provide. If anything in this video was unclear, please talk to me in the comments below. I'm very used to painting guitars by now. So there might be a bunch of things that I skipped over because I wasn't thinking about it because it's such a natural process for me. Anyway, until next time, stay awesome and cool and go and paint a guitar. It's a lot of fun and I think you're gonna enjoy it. And it's a great way of making a guitar into a custom guitar that is, you know, unique to you and, and it's only yours. So do it and enjoy it.